speaking to us on management of advanced diabetic eye disease, a hope for the desperate. Doctor, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a great uh, honor to be uh, to present my work here in the All India Ophthalmological Society, and uh, I thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, uh, these are the cases I'm talking about. Uh, usually, single-eyed patients with old standing diabetes, uh, uh, multiple layers of the abrasion and membranes. You can't even distinguish the macula and the disc. There are uh, so many pathologies here. You can atrophic, very friable retina that is easily torn, uh, con contracted, very thick membranes that are much thicker and, and tougher than the retina itself, uh, multiple epicenters that you have to cut each of, uh, of these epicenters. All forms of vitreous hemorrhage are there, subretinal hemorrhages and the combined uh, rigmatogenous and attractional retinal uh, detachment, and uh, plus other pathologies like cataract, glaucoma, rubiosus, iridis. These are uh, uh, the eyes that you are dealing with, and you cannot see these eyes uh, except in two countries, India and Egypt. Uh, we are famous of these neglected cases. Uh, you also can find the tabletop traction, which is very difficult to separate from the retinal surface, uh, macular hole, very thin atrophic retina, uh, uh, blood vessels obliterated, every pathology. And these are single-eyed patients that you have to, to do something in order to give them just ambulatory vision. Uh, my preferred technique, step zero, I always do this even if the, uh, uh, only in few cases I don't inject uh, anti uh, a few days before surgery. This makes the membranes crispy and easily removed. During surgery, the first step is to remove the core of the vitreous with all of the blood. Then this is very important to separate the central vitreous from the peripheral vitreous. This allows you to work uh, on the central vitreous without uh, causing uh, uh, traction on the periphery or causing uh, heterogenic breaks. Then the most important step is to identify the cleavage plane between the uh, membranes and the retina. This is very important, and you have to invest in this membrane brain. After trimming, you do delamination. Don't make any traction over the epicenters. Any traction will uh, cause a lot of troubles. Uh, uh, it can tear the retina very easily. After that, you trim these membranes. Then uh, one of the most important and beneficial techniques is to separate the membranes. The uh, 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 segmentation of the membranes is, is very, very important. Then uh, trim the membranes. Now it can be uh, removed easily. Uh, the only membrane brain that you can remove by a avulsion is uh, the NVDs because the disc will not be torn with you after avulsing these membranes. Then after finishing with that, I do my uh, kinacort stain or uh, triamcinolone staining. I defer staining uh, to the late because it obscures vision. It does not clear uh, completely. Then remove the real posterior hyaloid, epiretinal membranes, shave the vitreous periphery, do the laser, and fill the eye with the final Tambuna. This is an example of one of the cases. Uh, this is a very uh, big membrane, very tough membrane covering the macula and the disc. So we segment this membrane. We segment this membrane. Now the macula can be seen. Then we trim. After we segment, we trim. We trim again. Uh, then we do the bimanual uh, uh, removal of this membrane by cutting the epicenters. Then we trim again the cut area by manual again, trimming again, trimming and trimming. After we remove the membranes, we remove the real posterior hyaloid. Now the retina uh, uh, is seen to be thin and atrophic. We treat the atrogenic breaks and do the panretinal photocoagulation and fill the eye with the final tamponade later on. This is a similar case with a macular hole. So uh, after doing uh, removing the vitreous and separating uh, the anterior vitreous from the posterior vitreous, we start the bimanual delamination. After that, after removing the membrane, we are using uh, the, uh, uh, u the, the useful technique of ILM peeling and stuffing the internal limiting membrane inside the macular hole. So this will close the macular hole, and we will end by 360 vision. This is very good ambulatory vision. This man can read using a magnifying lens, and his, uh, uh, most of the life uh, is restored. This uh, uh, case with hemorrhagic retinal detachment, 
and uh, a very thick membrane covering the macula and the disc. We, we can't see the macula or the disc. Uh, now we, uh, we found the golden plane, the golden plane between the membrane and the retina, and we are investing this membrane. We are cutting the, the tens of the epicenters that are, are attaching this membrane to the macular surface without causing any traction. Without causing any traction, now the membrane can be removed completely. And uh, uh, we make a drainage retinotomy, remove the subretinal blood and doing the laser. And this is the case before surgery and after surgery. Again, the, the man could regain 360 vision, which is good ambulatory vision. These are some cases of, of the same technique. I have tens of, now what are the results? The preoperative vision was only perception of light to counting fingers, maximally one meter. Most operatively, most of the cases could see 360. Most of the patients could see 360. Uh, some patients uh, could see better, but not, but not that much. And we have met all the complications written in every book. All the complications happened. The intraoperative complications, like iatrogenic breaks, and this was a rule. This occurred in 35 uh, 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 eyes or out of 41 eyes. Iatrogenic macular holes, avulsion of the arcade also occurred in two cases, two eyes of one patient. Lens injury, the early post-operative, we uh, severe reaction, especially in phaco vitrectomy, uh, secondary glaucoma, hyphema, large hematoma under the silicone, this is devastating, and persistent corneal epithelial defects. Late post-operative complications, including uh, persistent macular hole, persistent subretinal fluid that did not disappear, and it took more than one year to disappear. So, seclusive pupillae, high intraocular pressure, robiosis, all the complications can still happen, and you have to be ready for dealing with these complications. Of course, there is no enough time to speak about these complications, and thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Very exhaustive presentation.